It's a great joy and a privilege to bring to you this morning from mychurchnz.com, the Word of God. My name is Pastor Ken Noble, preaching this morning from the Word of God on global warming. If you'd like to turn your scriptures to chapter, uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, 3 to 14. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 to 14. Above all, you must understand that in the last days scoffers will come. Scoffers and following their own des evil desires. They will say, where is this coming? He promised. Where is your God? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it was in the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world at that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and the present earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends, with the day of the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as in some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient, not wanting anyone to perish, but come to repentance and eternal life. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, that heavens will disappear and a roar and the elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way by fire, what kind of people ought we to be? You ought to be living holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and the speed it's coming. That day will bring about destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements of this earth will melt away with the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and in peace with him. Let's pray. Father, help us not to be swept away with the gospel of man. Help us not to be swept away with the gospel of scientists, the gospel of educated clowns, but help us to be caught up in the gospel of your word and your authority this morning and what you have to say about global warming. It's easy for us to believe tripe against your word because we are bombarded daily with things that are contrary to your word. And then we start to believe in myths, what the world wants us to believe in. The world wants us to believe that man is in control and that God is irrelevant and he has nothing to do with global warming. Help us today to unpack your word to these dear people, what you have to say on this extremely important matter. In Jesus' name, amen. These days, folks, it seems almost impossible to turn on your TV, the news, Open up your computer, the morning newspaper, without being confronted with the idea of global warming. So-called experts present global warming as an imminent threat to, to the end of this planet, to which mankind ultimately will destroy himself and destroy the planet, and there'll be nothing left. We are brainwashed with lies and hysteria daily. The climate change is crashing, and that us, the mere humans, are to blame for this phenomena. Fear and guilt running rampant across men's faces and hearts. Thinking about global warming. The earth is starting to disappear. It's starting to fade. So in a short 20 years, there will be no more oxygen to breathe. And we'll all be dead. Our children at school are being taught that the earth is being destroyed. All the animals are going to die. And there'll be no more meat. There'll be no more fish. And it's all because of us. It's our fault. The Bible is a myth. It's ripped out of schools. It's ripped out of governments. It's ripped out of business. It's ripped out of homes. The truth of global warming from the Bible is now ripped out of every single aspect of our lives. We're told that the Bible is nothing but a fairy tale for old people to believe in. We're told that sea levels will rise 
And after all, when they rise, guess what, folks? We're all going to drown. Curbing population growth is only two methods of contraception and abortion. And abortion must be the heart of every government policy to fight this evil of global, global warming. So what are the claims of these lies told by global warmists? We hear a lot about carbon dioxide emissions and greenhouse gases. So what are the basic facts and lies behind these major claims about global warming? Claim number one, humans are causing the global warming. Many scientists believe global warming has ever been so slight. Since 1880, they can only register 0 0.007 degrees C since 1880. They believe that global warmers have not proven their case for the huge temperature rises expected of doubling of carbon emissions. And then in fact, carbon dioxide is beneficial, beneficial to life. In fact, there has been 20,000 scientists, physicists, geophysicists, climatologists, meteorologists, oceanographers, Environmental scientists have signed the following statement. I'll read it out to you now. It says this, There is no convincing scientific evidence that human release of carbon dioxide, methane, or any other greenhouse gases is causing catastrophic heating of the Earth's atmosphere. Atmospheric carbon dioxide is the medicine of life itself. It is the main source to which plants and animals construct their tissues. This fact is so well known, in fact, that we humans and all the rest of the biosphere are described as carbon-based life forms. Claim number two, global warming will cause many animals and plants to go away and die and become extinct. A moat of com computer animated polar bears treadling for their lives on sheets of ice, slipping into cold waters of the sea, struggling to find rest on that last piece of thin ice. Receding glaciers and melting ice caps and other changes to the earth temperature are likely to affect animal and plant species. But based on the fossil records to date, it appears that many species flourish in climate change. This especially happened in the days of Noah. After the flood, humans had nothing to do with it. In Noah's day, animal life and species, in fact, multiplied after the flood. According to some climate model predictions, several plant and animal species could go extinct by 2050 due to climate change. However, there is absolutely no documented evidence of such result from global warming. The oceans will rise and dramatically Sadly, it will drown us all. This to me is one of the most tragic and alarming claims. Another computer model with a massive ice sheet slides into the sea, causing the oceans to rise by 20 feet and submerging much of the Earth's coastlines, suggesting up to 100 million homes and families will be flooded in the next 50 years. But folks, there's no hard evidence which supports this. We're told in scriptures in Genesis chapter 8 verse 22, God promises never to flood this world ever again. The Bible says while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. That's the word of God, folks. I didn't make that up. God told us this. He promised us this. In other words, there will be no worldwide floods. There will be no rising of seas. There will be no more drastic temperature rises or falls. So what does all of this mean? It means simply this, folks, that God's in control of the world temperature, not man. It means that God controls the climate. I'm sorry, it's not man. God controls the Earth's ecosystems. I'm sorry, it's not man. And God controls our environment. I'm sorry, it's not man. It's so presumptuous. And it is so shocking in my view that many Christians and non-believers alike to think that man is in control of this destiny of the planet that God created for us. If it were not so, God would have warned us. We are told in scripture, in fact, the exact opposite. 
Global warming will cause the increasing number of weather catastrophes. Global warming is conveniently blamed for the increased hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, droughts, famines and extreme temperature rises. The fact is that extreme weather has never been out of the ordinary since the days of Noah and in the days of Elijah. For it's written, the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you and he will shut up the heavens so that there will be no rain and the ground will not yield its fruit and you will perish quickly from the good land which the Lord is giving you unless you repent and come to the living God. Elijah said to Ahab, As the Lord liveth, the God of Israel lives before whom I stand. Surely there will be no rain for seven years except by my word. God created the heavens and the earth and the temperatures and the seas and the animals by his word. God controls the weather. And before you get into bed with all these global warmest alarmists and the global warming crowd, you need to, you need to understand where they're all coming from. I can tell you where they're coming from. They're coming from an absolute godless position. There is no mention of God or his word in any of their scientific documents. After all, science and evolution is king. Science and evolution is their God. I cannot understand for the life of me why so many Christians believe this absolute propaganda. Even more difficult to comprehend is why some self-professing Christians are caught up in the notion that government, international action, are the proper methods to fight this phantom threat. This nonsense is propagated by people who worship creation and not the creator. Using all their energy and all their spare time to save the planet and animals from greenhouse gases, but doing nothing to please the creator of all. Saving the whales, aborting babies, rallying up school kids to Wellington, petitioning governments, petitioning school kids to rally in Auckland, Wellington, Brisbane, all over the world, brainwashing kids. Worldwide forums on climate change and more nonsense. We're specifically warned against worshipping creation, but rather that of the Creator. For it says in Romans chapter 1, 21 to 25, They glorified Him not as God, neither were they thankful, but they became vain in their own imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became absolute fools, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. The truth is this, folks. Are you ready for it? The truth of the environment's greatest threat to global warming is this. You need to be sitting down and ready for this. I'll tell you the truth of global warming. It's men's sin and rebellion towards God. In Genesis we read, the earth was cursed. Cursed is the ground because of you and your sin, the Bible says. And toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. In Genesis 6, it caused the earth to be destroyed by the global flood. God says that even though man's heart is desperately wicked and constantly evil, the flood waters will never ever again come upon the face of the earth to destroy everything that breathes. God says that. It's contrary to global woman's theory. It's simply not the production of carbon dioxide that God finds offensive, folks. It's the activity in the rebellion of sin. Nowhere in the Bible does God ever suggest that carbon dioxide emission is a sin. Carbon dioxide is not a pollutant. It's a naturally occurring gas, just like oxygen is. Believe it or not, God created carbon dioxide, not man. And nature itself produces a way more carbon dioxide than man. And people are buying electric cars, planting trees, 
getting carbon credits, creating alternative clean green fuels, building green safe homes, preparing for global warming. But sadly, and very sadly, this is the truth of global warming. People are not preparing for the coming of the Lord and the end of time. Are you preparing for global warming? Or are you preparing for the coming of the Lord? There will come a time when the earth is destroyed with intense global warming heat, the scripture says. We are not talking about a few little degrees. We're talking about extreme global warming. So severe it will melt every single element of this earth. The Bible says this, I want to remind you that in the last days there will be scoffers who will laugh at the truth about global warming. They will forget that God made the heavens by the word and he brought the earth up from the water from global warming waters. Then he used the water to destroy the world with mighty flood. And God has also commanded that the heavens and the earth will be consumed by severe global warming fire on the day of judgment when ungodly people will perish. Then the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise by extreme global warming and everything in them will disappear in fire and heat not by global warming of seas and the earth and everything on it will be exposed to judgment and the myth of global warming will be ex exposed to what it really is nothing but a pack of lies are you this morning preparing for the coming of the lord is your heart preparing for the coming of global warming or is it preparing for the coming of, of the lord jesus christ this morning since everything around us is going to melt away, we should be preparing for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, not global warming. This day is described in Luke chapter 21. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon and in the stars and in the earth distress of nations will be with perplexity in the seas and the waves roaring and men's hearts failing them for fear. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption comes near. Nothing about global warming here, folks, in this statement. In Revelation chapter 6, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood and the stars of heaven fell to the earth. As a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind, then the sky receded as a scroll when it was rolled up, and every mountain and every island was moved out of its position. And the kings of the earth and the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the governments, the New Zealand government, and the presidents of the United States, and every slave and every free man hid, them, hid themselves in the caves. And in the rocks of the mountains, they hid them faces in shame and said to the mountains and the rocks this fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath has come for all those that believe that man is in control of global warming and not his sovereign word the facts are simple folks and they're laid out in scripture very clearly in Isaiah 49 for those who followed him would never perish from the heat of the sun are you following him this morning? Are you following the Antichrist theorists and global warmists? Or are you following the word of the Lord this morning? It says this. For those who follow him will never perish from the heat of the sun. For those that follow him will never perish from rising temperatures. For they shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor the sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on him shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. If global warming was represented as a real threat to us believers this morning, God would have not have made such wonderful promises to the believers that believe in him. God didn't miss anything out in Scripture to tell us and warn us and instruct us. Do you today agree with this godless world?
Are you one of them that believe in these global alarmists? Or do you believe this morning what God says about global warming? For it's my belief, it's sheer folly and ego for a man to believe he controls the destiny of God's weather. It is foolishness and, and folly to believe that man controls the seas, man controls the temperatures. But it's even more disgraceful to who those that profess to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and preach a false gospel of global warming that directly contradicts the word of God. So wrapping up, folks, this morning, it's very difficult for some of you globalist warmists to believe what I'm telling you this morning, but God has taken sides on this argument. He has got something to say about global warming, and he definitely comes out on the side of man's sinfulness and rebellion. Man-made global warming. The folks, it won't be cars, it won't be cows, it won't be coal producing. It won't be the production of carbon dioxide that will cause global warming, but the sinfulness of man. This time it will be cleansed by water, as it was in the days of Noah, but this time it will be cleansed by fire. The truth is, not only will the earth be destroyed with fire, folks, but our sun, our solar system, our galaxies and our whole total physical universe will be burnt up and destroyed and finished with a hot heat of God's global warming. Heaven itself, the scripture says, and its throne room, which were tainted by sin and devil and his angels and Satan. This will be destroyed by fire. So what's the only solution to climate change that's acceptable to God this morning? God demands a climate change in you. God just doesn't believe in climate change. God demands a climate change this morning. The climate change of your life and your heart must change. The climate of heaven is unsuitable for unwashed sinners in the blood who do not repent There'll be no jealousy. There'll be no unforgiveness. There'll be no unkindness, no selfishness. Clearly, for us to enter eternity this morning, we must experience in our own lives a climate change and our own thoughts and our own nature and what we believe toward God. Or do we believe what man says in the papers and the newspaper and the television sets? And if we don't experience this climate change in our lives while we're on this earth, folks, we're going to have to experience a real global warming. And that global warming comes in the form of everlasting separation from God himself. For the scripture says, Therefore, if anyone in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation. The old climate is gone. The new climate change of his heart has appeared. God wants a climate change in your life. God wants a climate change in your house, your home. God wants a climate change at work in every other area of your life this morning, but it all starts with repentance towards our old sinful life and acceptance of God's grace and forgiveness in Christ. For by him all things were created. By him the weather was created. By him the rain was created. By him the temperatures, the seas, the ice, the polar bears and more, both in heaven and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities or governments or prime ministers or climate change organisations, all things, the scripture says, have been created by him and for him. Let's pray. Father, as we have just heard your word on global warming, we are a people ever so grateful that global warming, climate change, is all in your hands. It's all in your control. 
and not that of the self-appointed, educated fools of men that have become so wise they've in fact become total fools. But please help us to trust in you and that your promises are yea and amen this morning. And what your word has to say about global warming is the last word and it's all that we ever need to know and believe in. So as we go our separate ways this morning, please bless these dear people that have listened to this sermon this morning on global warming. And may the God of grace and mercy and favour be upon each and every one as they go. And may they never fear about global warming. But may they fear the name of the Lord. And may the Lord thy God this morning be with each of you until we meet next week. Amen.